okay. right now that bind is going to be bind is going to be the play. So let's see how it goes. Gentlemen, enjoy game number two. Thank you very much, Moses. Enjoy your morning whilst we get into our <laughs> second map of the day. I think that Pora could shine here, though, on the on the cypher. He certainly was trying a lot of flanks on split. And if we are going to see the slow methodical play from Fabrican once again, then maybe Pora can take advantage of that by pushing round and catching them off guard. But we'll see what happens as there's already a wall in Hookah, which means Leo is going to have to be very patient here with Zipan. There's a little bit of an audio cue there. That's arguably a mistake. You don't want to really give too much audio cues, but maybe you could force a rotate. But it's definitely going to be a B push. But look at the rotate coming from the other team. And they're actually... The flank, yeah. There's a potential for them to catch them off guard here. Leo giving a lot of audio here. And they would not expect Turco to be there. Turco gets the opening frag. And now him and Lucker can push towards Fountains. Meadow's there to clean one up. But this is just a bombardment. At least Shadow and Zipan were able to come back. Otherwise, that could have been very detrimental. As Pora makes it three. And what did I say about Pora potentially having the... X Factor oh. here as he makes it a 4k. Zipan falls and we get the early lead here for Prodigy. And honestly, Pora just looks different class in these early rounds. Yeah, he does. But again, how ready they were to, to kind of push aggressively on that. The information went over, immediately the flank comes out. You know, there's two there's two players going through the attacker's spawn so quickly into the round that that, that push must have been directly through short or showers. It didn't actually catch it on the minimap, unfortunately, but just the timing there is just a, a, a different tempo altogether. Aura was able to pick up around nine kills in the opening few rounds on split. And I'm sure he'll be trying to get close to that total here on bind, but it's going to be a very quick push this time onto A. It's going to be a default execute. Smokes are going to be down and vision impaired for Prodigy, but nades and paint shells are available. He's also got last packs to try and do some damage and the nade already connects with one. That's done a little bit of damage in lamps at the same time. We'll take down the recon dart. And for Zipan and the rest of the boys, well, they just hope that someone's going to push into lamps and they can at least do something here. But they're just focusing elsewhere at the moment, our prodigy. Ryan finds Leo. And the guys in lamps are just going to be sitting ducks as they walk out. They're going to get walled off at the same time. Meadow might have been able to find at least one, but I think it's going to be a little bit too late. I have to get off the spike now, is hip. Flash comes through, but unfortunately, the Flash just walks straight into Poro on the rifle. I love this second round rifle yeah. buy from Poro. It's just worked out so well time and time again. But uh, really, really confident retake there. Again, two players being boxed into the lamps there. The wall just completely cuts them off. And again, they've only got pistols. I think the satchels, uh, sorry, the blast packs had already been used elsewhere. So really, really good retake from the guys there. Poro. Finds his fifth already in the second round. And like you said, that investment again, paying off for them. Here's a game for you. Where's that on the map? I know. In, inside heaven. Yes, it is. Yeah, well done. One point for you today on our observers' sneaky little crafty areas. Fabrican have guns now, but poor and Turco say, we Love do that. not respect you whatsoever with the quick peek out. And the wall not going to work out either. And now it's going to be the player advantage for Prodigy on their way to maybe even making this a 3-0 lead. A couple of SMGs still around, so definitely still winnable for Fabricant. Meadow with the new Out of Flame Vandal in hand. He's going to slow peek out. We'll catch one onto nice. Heaven. Does he know there's a player on default is the real question. Well, he does now because of the audio cues. Boombot comes out to gain a little bit of information for himself. As Hip moves round. Interesting to see Hip on the raise rather than the Rainer. Ah, oh, Shadow No. Trying to get the utility oh, out just oh. at the wrong time. Timing is everything. And it's all down to Meadow now. Even though he has managed to work his way onto a site, he doesn't have control of the spike. I love this though. Prodigy taking the fight to him. Know that they've, they've got a couple of Spectres on the board. They make an aggressive play to cancel out Fabrican's first buy round. And the, the aggression there outside of Hookah... Again, just it literally stops the round. All oh, the timing there. Hip actually going to upgrade. He's going to come back and check ramps. Sorry, lamps. And Meadow going to find him with the headshot. Molly goes onto the spike. He's got to grab it. He's going to eat a lot of damage there, though. And he's out to 78. Going to try and pull it down backside. But Pora is there waiting for him and give him a vandal headshot for his troubles. It is something uh, we're starting to see a lot more. Like people on their third round just getting aggressive and essentially yeah, using it as absolutely. a free round. 
because with those SMGs, you, you have to try and do something. If you just sit back and you defend and you, you find yourself holding angles, you're going to lose those gunfights against the Vandals and the Phantoms that are going to be coming around the corner. Hora is the only one on the team that does seem to buy up a Vandal on round two, and at least they have that extra bit of firepower if they need the backup, if they need someone to sit back and go clutch at the end of a round. And it's Absolutely. worked out several different times for them now. But you see, Pora was one of the first that swung out underneath the wall that was put up coming out of Hookah. Pora's there with the firepower. And again, you know, you can kind of bank on maybe one or two people on the buy round. They go for a default setup. You know, they split across the map. It's potentially only going to be one or two people peeking out of that market entrance. And they, they literally swarm it as three. It, it's, it's a really heads up play. It's going to be an eco round for Fabricant. And it's going to be another oh, default. But what yep. a nade that is from Zipan taking down Hip. He's got Showstopper to work with as well. Looks towards default. Will he catch one player? Just has to fire and he does get it. <laughs> and that's going to be two down for Prodigy. So the eco round working, utilizing the ultimate ability of the Showstopper well. But Pora elsewhere has taken down Leo. And that's scary because Neural Theft can come out. Now he gets all of that information. Knows there's one player towards showers so he can wait he can be patient but has to be careful from short checking both yeah, angles we'll get shot in the back unfortunately latex with the stinger and prodigy with a lot to do in a two versus four retake it's just not going to work out here zipan's been able to pick up the op and fabricant are going to put their first one down on the scoreboard again though really clean execute and that's uh i mean you see what i'm saying though right dan they they, they didn't look this poised on any of their attacking rounds on split and whether or not this is just a homework thing, the playbook is a bit deeper on bind. It's got to be an issue going forward if this becomes a recurring thing. We have seen some big victories for Fabricant on bind historically. I say historically like there's a long, deep Valorant history, but in recent <laughs> weeks when we've seen About them play, years. <laughs> all the years of Valorant we've had. Back in my day. But Fabricant do look strong when they get rolling. My My only worry is if Prodigy are really able to take advantage of the flanking possibility of the likes of Pora and the, the aiming capabilities of Turco as well. Fabricant somehow need to either avoid Pora or wait for him and say, look, we, we know he's going to be pushing, we know he's going to be rotating on that flank, so let's just be patient and catch him off guard. As soon as we take him down, we have that player advantage and then we can push onto the side. And I guess on the other side, it's down to Pura to recognize that maybe he's going to be one of the threats and one of the targets. So he has to slightly change his play style here if it doesn't work out. Again, though, we're going to see uh, we're going to see Meadow on this showers lurk again. Three players of Prodigy stacked up towards B site, and it's looking like the spike's going to go that way. Owl Drone going to make his way through Hookup, try and look for something. We do have. Player in glass, Turco going to be playing next to Wood, but no contact on Long just yet. So it's going to be interesting to see now because four players from both teams now stacked up over towards the B site. And Meadow actually, I mean, if he gets this peak onto Hip, Hip might try and flex out lamps a little bit. This could be a bloodbath on B site here, Dan. Well, there's one, two. Yep, certainly oh, a pool of blood up. just everywhere on Long. And meanwhile, Meadow's still on A site doing absolutely nothing as the Cypher. Zipan will get spotted out. At least he gets one, but Lucker there with the op. Now it's just damage control for Meadow. At least he's going to be able to get a weapon here with only 13 seconds left. Oh dear. It's just a judge. <laughs> Sorry, just a buddy. Judge. <laughs> You're staying with that Bulldog. You are not rewarded for hanging out in showers the entire round. Okay, where's that? <laughs> I don't know. Where? Oh, okay. Yeah, I've never seen that. Never bothered looking into Elbow. I'm going to be completely honest. I've I avoid it like the plague. I've died enough times that I knew where that was. Avoid it like the plague. What's That's on the screens, though? That's right the real now. question. I'm streaming from there. Nothing like a teabagging bear to get you through your Sunday morning, eh, Moses? But 4-1 now for Prodigy. Uh, Fabric and the unfortunately just ran into an absolute beast of a hold on that B site. Anywhere where Lucker is going to be residing with the op is going to be a very difficult site to push in on. At least we're going to see an op available for Shadow this time. He's just going to have a little peek towards Cubby, but no one is going to be there. So they can gain a little bit of control of A short here and then start to think about where they want to go. But I'm just glad that Prodigy aren't playing into their kind of slow strategy of Fabric in here. They're not rotating too quickly now.
They need to uh, they need to get some value off of this lurk in a couple of rounds. Yeah. I mean the lurk from showers, because uh, again it looks like we're stacked up. We've got three players over towards the A side now. There's going to be a little bit of a rotation. Actually, going to be uh, Lucker heading up towards heaven, and that might mean Hip is going to peel back a little bit. But here you go, the triple smoke comes out. Double smoke. That's the orbital strike going to clear out lamps. Lucker going to find latex. They come up short. Shadow going to look to come through and pressure lamps here, but it's going to be a straight four on four on the A site here. If they can try and get the spike down, Rhymes actually going to find Zipan from this corner. And a two for two trade back in the other way. And now we're left in a 2v3 situation for the Fabrican boys. Shadow trying to find something up towards heaven, but Lucker's not going to give him anything because he's down to 26 HP. Spike's still not down yet. And nobody's, I was going to say, nobody's in a position to deny the default plant here. 15 seconds, though. And there you go. Hunter's Fury is popped. Uh, she's going to cross over, but Turco's going to find that. 1 HP. The 1 HP denial for the spike going down there. And actually, Shadow going to land a ghost headshot. But uh, not going to get that one. Poor going to tag him on the spy cam as well, just for good measure. Shadow going to survive this one out. Great hold again from Prodigy, though. And again, the preemptive Hunter's Fury there. Like I said, nobody in a position to deny the spike going down on default, but you called it absolutely right, Dan. He was playing, Lucker was playing back in heaven corner so that he could do just that. They had the Hunter's Fury available. They had the Molotov from the Brimstone, even the Orbital Strike for good measure. Fabrican were no way getting that spike down. They no, just left no. it too late. And I think when you look at that, the top of the, the screen and you see that many ultimates, you see what ultimates are available, you have to kind of make a game plan around that. You can't be waiting that long to get onto a site. Otherwise, you are going to be in a sticky situation. As Bora, well, he's in a little bit of a sticky situation of his own. Peeks out perfectly at the right time for Shadow to take the opening frag. Neural Theft comes out for a bit of info. And now the rotate is going to have yeah. to happen from B site. So they need to go quickly here because there is not many players there on A. One is going to be in lamps. It's going to be hit there. He's going to get a bit of a hip hip hooray, but he does catch one with the boom bot, does some damage, follows up with a showstopper, does connect oh, oh, oh. onto Latex, and Hip That's has done his it. job. He's delayed, oh. he's got a kill, Turco gets the one with Orbital Strike, Shadow's still doing damage with the op, but maybe this is just going to be a little bit too late because he gets smoked off in showers. It's a two versus three where Fabrican once again are on the back foot. And the res is going to come out as well, Luck is going to be back on his feet here. And here you go, three members already, but the Rolling Thunder is ready here, they could see a Nice little push in on the back of this one. Meadow's going to find one, but Hip trades it out. Shadow now, the last member. And there you go, Lucker with the Operator. Going to clutch that one out. It's going to put six on the board for Prodigy. Fantastic retake there. I like the investment of the Revive just for good measure. No ultimates on the side of Prodigy here. Everything's spent up, but unfortunately, they couldn't capitalize off the Rolling Thunder. I, I think it actually just missed Dark. There was a player in Dark there. And Meadow, unfortunately, uh, took a bit too long to clean up the player outside the teleport. Another update for you guys. The... Uh, it is 1-1 for G2 and Party Parrots right now headed into map number 3. 13-4 to four on Ascend for G2. Exactly what I was just about to say, Burgess. Thanks for tuning in at the right time, keeping us up to date. G2 at least coming back into things elsewhere. There are only four teams left in the tournament right now. Winner of these will, of course, go into the winner's bracket final. Loser drops down to the lower bracket semis. So a double elimination for today. So we've got three best of threes we're going to see on stream and then one best of five for the grand final. So plenty of Valorant action coming your way. And I wonder whether this game is going to be a somewhat quick one with how Prodigy are playing right now. Fabrican just haven't been able to break through onto the sites. Even though the executes have been there, they've got the spike down a couple of times. The the hold has just been too strong right now. It's been the post plant. That's been, that's been the issue here. And again, a lot of ultimates invested to save that. As I say, ultimates, the Hunter Fury going to get invested here. He's actually going to get one tag. Can he get a second? There you go. Leo will find Turco, but Lucker replies onto Meadow. We haven't got a full push inside yet. Aftershock going to go in. Not doing any damage, though. And Zipan made it all the way through to Elbow. He's going to find four for free coming out of spawn. And he's actually going to find two more as well. All right, Zipan. We there see we you go. with the 4K. There we, we see go. you. That's what we needed from Fabrican. We needed someone to step up to the plate and take this game firmly in their grasp. And he's done just that. A second round for Fabrican hopefully will be a little bit of a confidence booster for them. They look so good at these quick executes, Dan. They look so good. It's only really when things kind of slow down, the post plant becomes, you know, a slow 
methodical clearance from Prodigy where, where Fabric can seem to fall apart. So I'm wondering really if they need to react a bit quicker off these picks. And I think that's that might be only the second round we've seen them draw first blood, but it's it's so interesting to watch. Well, Prodigy may be predicting another B execute as they have firmly stacked three members of the squad. Two of them getting aggressive at B long. Shock Dart will do a little bit of damage there, so they will retreat back to B site. Leo won't necessarily know that he has done any damage there. But there was a little bit of spray through the smoke, so at least he got the audio cue that were a couple of members down B long. But it's definitely just a default spread across the map for Fabrican at the moment. I mean, you said that you wanted the, the fast executes. Well, not this round. They are biding their time, maybe expecting Prodigy to do something a little bit wacky here, hoping that someone was going to push out and get aggressive, get a little bit excited and try and get a rotate on the go and flanking behind, but it's not going to happen. Which means they're going to need to regroup at this point, and Meadow's still in shower showers at this Like It feels like he's been there the entire game, if I'm going to be completely honest. He lives here. Yeah, and this is the problem, though. When they, when Prodigy are playing 2 on a luck is usually in heaven. You see the smoke going to go down now. Hip needs to take contact in that back cubby. See, they're going to come out. Showers free here. There you go. Hip actually going to find 1-2 on the exit. That is really, really good work from that position. Shadow eventually going to shut him down with the operator, but smoke still down on heaven. Means that they're going to have an opportunity. I say that. Zip Bang going to find the end of a bullet from Lucker. And now the Molotov coming out. Only 11 seconds left. The incendiary going to deny the plant over by triple there. Six seconds. Need to get this down. Rhyme's going to find Shadow as well. You can see the ping in it. Pora on that long flank. Again, time almost running out there. And they were committed to getting the spike down. And unfortunately, again, Prodigy just bought so much time there. The poor is able to run the entire rap on the map. That was an unintentional rhyme, but you can have it. And uh, we'll find the plant on default. I mean, you you came up with a couple of unintentional rhymes yesterday as well. I don't think I should remind the stream of what they were, but they were somewhat concerning, certainly in my mind. Although very creative, and that's where I, that's why I like you. Creativity yeah, at its best, high pop. Was it the flank bank? Was was that the flank uh, bank? Yeah, was, uh, flank bank. I guess my yeah. finest hour. Oh, I mean, one that will certainly be clipped and remembered for years to come. But fabric and just too slow yet again. And I, I really don't like the push out of showers without any smokes, without any vision being impaired on the other side. It just allowed Hip to get a comfortable two man spray down. And to be honest, if it wasn't for the paint shells coming his way, he could have made it three. But it's going to be showers again this time. But is there going to be smokes to work with? That's the real question. At least Latex is there, but he's just getting bombarded by shock darts and boom bots. And uh, yeah, they don't fancy this one. They'll take the orb and they will leave showers because they've they've done their job. They've forced the rotate out of Prodigy at the very least. But look at the positioning from the cipher. Where has been able to work his way all the way down to be long. Got so much information now at this point. He even picks up the orb to get neural theft available to him. And he says, yeah, this ain't going to be B, guys. But again, though, now he can go and put an aggressive trap or something. He's actually going to set up for the teleport rotate. But so again, smart. just look how deep the spy cam is as well. And here you go. Going to have another push out. Denied by the Radionite. Slow on the ground. Four players set up on backside. Again, it's going to be a bloodbath of an execute here. Molotov going down. Actually, Leo... Gonna find a nice headshot through the smoke there and gonna find a second on site. Hip will fall. That's one player remaining. Turco gotta hold down the fort. The zip man's gonna find him. And here you go, Pora coming up into heaven. Not greeted with the showstopper. Another missed one. Spy cam comes out a triple. He's gonna be onto that. So he knows that one player's there and he's had the audio cue of where Zipan is, but Zipan's holding that dirty angle over the top. There you go, can't land it. Zipan will make absolute use of that. That's one of the most annoying angles to die from, Dan. I absolutely hate it. There was a tenth of a second left before that spike went down. Fabrican cutting it so, so fine, but this time it, it working out. I mean, I liked the the idea from Pora there where he said, look, I'm, I'm going to set up for the potential push through from the teleport. But maybe he should have gone for a flank a little bit earlier when he realized that there was no one B long and he had fountain control and he had short control as well of B. It has allowed Fabrican to push their way onto site, but it was just some 
some decent aim battles they were able to take. Could have been so different if that plant hadn't gone down though. Unfortunately for Prodigy, they didn't have the same means to deny it as earlier. Now they have Hunter's Fury available, Showstopper and Neural Theft. All can be used. It's going to be a Marshall versus an Op. And Shadow says, oh, well, if you've only got a Marshall, I'm going to repeak that one, Sunshine. And Prodigy on a somewhat weak buy here, which may allow Fabrican to get a fourth round. A much needed as well, because they're, uh, they're not looking as hot this time around. It looks like Prodigy are pretty much ready for anything. They're going to show that. See Rolling Thunder going to roll through Wood on Mong here, Turco. Going to lose out on that one, fully stunned. Leo will find Hip elsewhere. The Hunter's Fury gets popped, and you see now Meadow with that shower lurk. He's pushed all the way through a site. Spike going to go through showers as well now. They're going to get control. Both players have to come rotate. I wonder whether this might just be a save, to be honest, for Prodigy. Going into the final two rounds, they're going to have a buy for the next round, but if they save these two weapons and plan accordingly with their economy, they should be able to get a buy for both if they were to lose the next. So a smart decision from them, but better from Fabric and a little bit more pace about them. It helped that they got the early pick yet again. It seems like when they do get that early pick, they just have the confidence to push towards the site. And the Meadow, he, he's done his job there on a... I mean, he struggled in the early rounds. He wasn't able to get as much information. He wasn't able to push onto the site for free. But now he is lurking on that shower side, and now he is being able to push onto the site. He's just giving so much info to the rest of the team. They were able to comfortably rotate away from those ultimates that were being popped on the B site. 7-4 in favor of Prodigy. Latex dies to the spike. <laughs> Not what you want to see, really. But do you think Prodigy would be happy with it, an 8-4 here? Or do you think this is more likely going to a 7-5? Oh, absolutely. And again, Prodigy, you know, they've got to understand that this is uh, Fabrican's best map. So to take it and... Uh... Take it in an 8-4 fashion on the defensive side. And, you know, Fabrican, in my eyes, when we saw them playing against G2, they, they looked much better on attack than they did on defense. And that's where we saw them kind of do the most damage to G2. So uh, Prodigy definitely got to be happy. I mean, they'll be happy with 7 as well, to be honest with you. Uh, Fabrican, I mean, again, we're going to see Meadow up here. And that's, that's, what, one out of nine rounds that we've seen that Lurk pay off. But it was on the back of getting the entry onto B site. So um, you got to question whether or not, you know, that hooker 2 3 split with long would pay off for them on the, the times where they, they, are, they are pressuring and getting that first blood. One thing I have noticed is that you have a sponsor on your t shirt. So it means we're at least not wearing the exact same t shirt. Um, so it's slightly different. That makes me feel a little bit better about myself. Okay. So, uh, so I, I was a little bit worried at first, but I mean, I you're, can... a stylish, you're a stylish man. So, I, can cover, I can cover it. There you go. Well, now, now that makes me feel bad again, but okay. it's okay. Uh, but do we think that this, it, there is, there's still hope for Fabrican here? I know there was a couple of dodgy rounds and they, they looked a little bit slow at times, but when we saw them perform well on by before, it was their defensive half that was relatively strong against G2. So maybe, just maybe, they're going to be okay going into half number two? I mean, yeah, I'm hoping we're going to see the, these same sorts of pushes we saw from them on defense. Because, again, they, they had these really, really smart uh, on the buy rounds, again, particularly in the anti-eco round as well. We we saw them have these really, really strong defensive execution, you know, the aggressive long B information gathering, and then just a quick rotate round to try and stop a push onto the opposite site. So I'm hoping we see more of that. But... Uh, before we do see some of that, we're going to see the last round of their attacking half here. It looks like we've got a three-man B-long push. Hip going to find Meadow on that shower look, and now all the information goes over to Prodigy. They know nobody else is here. Hip has full control of Short. Now, they're going to have to rethink this. And you can see now Hip going to pull back, probably just play a position on site, maybe just play a tiki little corner. And three players over towards B with Lucka in the defensive spawn. Ults available for both sides. Orbital Strike on the side of Fabrican as well as Hunter's Fury that they could use to try and maybe get onto the site, but also very good post plan. Look at Ultimates hip. at the same time. Hips all the way outside the attacker's teleporter. 
There's the orbital strike coming in. Ryan gets one onto Zipan as he tries to push on. The wall comes out just to give him a little bit of defense on the site. He does have a res available to him, but I don't know if he's going to have time to pop it here. He just has to go for a whole bunch of one. Yes, trade armor will not connect with the second. And Leo now is going to be able to put this plant down. It's a two versus two. He probably wants to try and get off this site with this yeah. Hunter's Fury, but he's in such a sticky situation here where it's very difficult for him to get off site. Hip with the flank, though, look. They're going to deny the control of long. And that's actually huge considering they've still got that Hunter's Fury, as you said. Leo's actually going to opt to play on site. Let's see, there you go. Luck is going to find Leo as well. It means it's going to be a two versus one, and Hip has the flank here on elbow and just oh, the shadow time turn. And wait. Prodigy will put their eighth on the board, and a decent hold from Rhyme, if I'm completely honest, on that site. Being able to wall himself up after getting the initial frag and then pushing around it and rotating around that wall just to ensure he got the perfect vision on the other player that's pushing onto site. So Fabrican with a lot of work to do now on this defensive site. And we're going to get our first taste of how Prodigy approached this game when it comes to attacking on bind. What are their executes like? Again, big round though. Talk about pistol rounds being important when you're in an 8-4 deficit. I think that's uh it's pretty safe to say they want to get this one on the board because again they have the chance to bring it to like 8-7 realistically. But uh gonna see if we see any pushes out here from Fabrican. Stompy McStompinson's down B long, but just keeping an eye on that circle, just making sure they don't actually make noise to the opposition. The flash comes out and the peak as well. Meadow tries to get a little bit of damage. At least he tags two players, which maybe will force Prodigy to back off ever so slightly. There are three members of Fabrican all residing on B site at the moment, so they do have to be very careful if they're going to head that way. But this this is exactly what I mean, though. That setup, we've seen that, that setup from Meadow with the, the aggressive spy cam and literally... Just hovering behind him with the flashpoint. As soon as the spy cam catches something, the flashpoint comes through. They try and peek and capitalize off it. That's the kind of aggression I'm talking about on defense from Fabrican that we don't see on any other map from them. Latex with the Molotov just outside of Hooker in case anyone is going to be brave enough to push through that smoke. But it looks like Prodigy very oh, firmly sure. heading towards A. Zipan, can he do anything here? He does get one. Doesn't quite get the second, but he did a little bit of damage. Turco thankfully was there to clean up, otherwise that could have been so detrimental. Spike will go down now, which is the default execute. Leo with the shot dot to try and damage the spike planter, but they're able to get away at the right time. Oh, the dink! And, oh my goodness, poor unfortunately, through the wall. Thought he had probably got away, but well predicted by Leo. Now it's a three versus four in favor of Fabricum. They push into Lamps and Shadow nice. and Meadow are there to clean up. That's a good job from them, and it's just going to be the brim now from Turco. Doesn't have a Molotov to work with, only has the classic, has to go huge, gets one, gets two, can he get a third here? No, he can't, Latex pushes at the right time. Oh, he does have the molly. Oh, he's already sent the molly, but I think he's got it halfway, so he should be fine. Yeah, yeah, should be. Oh, that is a worrying situation when you see that molly coming towards you, but well played by Latex, just heads up, noticing that he can get it halfway and had to push to make sure that he killed the plant. A very important round for Fabrican. I'm I'm loving these these post plant incendiaries from from the brimstones, you know the setup. But it's always it's always difficult when you have to you know do a lineup that's firing the incendiary straight up into the sky and it has like a seven second hang time. Because I mean, if you don't kill enough time in before the retake comes through, again they can they can stick it before the Molotov even comes down. And also, likewise, you know if they get it halfway before it lands as well, it's 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 interesting to see teams go for that kind of crutch play. And to be honest, he almost did it with the, the two frags with the classic as well. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Unfortunately, he had to peek for the third just because of the time. Zipan using the blast packs to take down the first. Latex getting the second through the wall. And uh, yeah, that, that's not going to work out for Prodigy. They're just trying to waltz onto the site and it not comfortable for them when Zipan has such a good angle on them. An easy round for Fabric in this one. It's going to be 8 6, a very quick one. They just wanted to get it out of the way this eco round. Bora down to just 71. Can he do any damage to the economy? Still five members remaining for Fabrican, but they know he's there. The shoulder peak from Meadow. 
denies anything from poor and Fabrican will get their buy round now so this is going to be our first taste of how Fabrican are going to uh, sorry yeah, the Prodigy are going to get their first buy round this is going to be our first taste of how Prodigy are going to approach their attacking half with rifles again though if we can get a chance to just see how the loadouts are for Fabrican. I know obviously they're going to have saved a few weapons, but this is what I'm talking about. This round here is the one where you kind of want to negate their first buy round. And you've got to assume that they're going to go for like a default setup, and maybe only have two people peeking out onto Hooker. And you can see actually that's exactly the case, but looking like we're going to have a much more passive setup here. Fabrican obviously wanted to play this one a bit more safe. Orbital Strike is available for Turco. Interestingly, might be using it aggressively here so that they can burst onto this A site. Often you'll see Orbital Strike sent towards lamps just to try and force players out or at least away back towards the defender spawn. I personally prefer Orbital Strike as a post-plant ultimate, but I like the heads-up play of just trying to take the initiative here and try and force something. But it's not being used just yet. Is he still in that orbital strike screen? No, he's finally moving. <laughs> I was worried maybe DC for a second, but the rest of the squad have all found their way towards B site. They are going to be pushing into cipher traps though, so this is where they've got to be careful. At least the owl drone is able to take down the first one. Makes it's going to be a really quick flank though, Dan. Look, we've already got one player pushing all the way through market here, and we've got four tied up in hookah. There's their orbital strike now, which can allow them to push onto the site and deny anyone back site from holding. Poor and Turco and Rhyme will all find one, just like clockwork. Hip also should be able to find a fourth here, which he does. Leo, unfortunately, with the SMG, not able to battle that one. And the flank is there. It's just a little bit too late from Zipan. Need to go huge here, which he does. Luck are well aware of it. 9-6, Prodigy put their first on the board with a team ace as well. But, but now, course, if now Fabrican if can buy up as well. If we can, uh, if we can actually look, because I did see a couple of upgrades. I'm not sure how the economy is going to sit here. It's, it's obviously going to be a buy round for Fabrican. I'm just intrigued because obviously the only ultimate we got to play around here is the showstopper. And whether or not the guys can hear me today, I think there has been a scoreboard bug, so unfortunately we can't see the okay. scoreboard. Um, apologies. Yeah, as you see, that's yeah, there you go. We only it's a little wiggle. Points. The little wiggle as if to say, stop talking about it, please. Yeah, Le leave us alone. <laughs> now, the observers have been great throughout this tournament, so we really appreciate them. It's a shame that there are still a couple of observer hitches, but I mean, that happens with patches and updates. I'm sure it'll be cleaned up soon. The spike been left behind at the moment. Gives me flashbacks to Bonk's approach to this map. <laughs> Don't talk about it again, please. And you were there rolling in your sleep. Cold sweat. Someone's forgot the spike. Reminding you of all your matchmaking days. As it's just a very patient approach from Prodigy here. Hoping that someone from Fabrican would step up out of position, but everyone are holding the line firm on both sides as the clock ticks down onto 50 seconds now. Silence emits across by. Oh, no, Finally, we'll see it. something being popped and a little bit of noise is going to be paint shells. Smokes are going to be there for potentially a fake here on the A side. There are the smokes. Does it force a rotate? Yes, the Brimstone is already thinking about moving, but no. He's heard something. And they're going to stay firm here at B site, which means it's just going to be a three versus three, but Bora makes it a three versus two. Make that a Ooh, three versus Bora. zero. What an entrance that was onto the site. Zipan at least found Turco elsewhere, but now it's just going to be all down to Leo. Does eliminate Bora. Owl on owl action. <laughs> the spike can go down. Just about. Zipan in hookah. Can't find anything. Leo's done such a good job. Does connect with one. Can he find the second onto site? He can. It's just a one versus one, but he is weak. Does he know there's a player in hookah? That's the real question. Has recon available if he wants to use it? Will use it. Spots out the one player. Can't get the spray oh, down, lucky. though. And Rhyme clutches it out for Prodigy. They take a 10 6 lead here. And what an entrance onto B site that was. That was absolutely insane. Again, from Poor. He is so consistent with his aim, with his peaks, and again, they had the setup there with the spy cam, the flashpoint was ready. Yeah. Unfortunately, I think it was just over the top of Pora's head. And maybe they uh, they got the information a little too late there, but a fantastic explosion from Pora out of B-Long with those two entry kills. And this is, uh, 
This is worrying territory here for Fabrican. 10-6 down. Let's see if they can maybe turn this one around. A couple of sheriffs on the board. That's unfortunate. The boombot going to spot out the hookah hiding spot. You can see three now pushed down B long. Shadow's going to catch sight of them. Does get a good flashpoint, but Lucker going to put him down with Phantom. Cybercage gets popped. Now, this is a tall order for Meadow. Actually, Neural Theft going to get popped elsewhere. And they're going to have the information of where exactly the enemies are. And you can see now, they're going to pop the TP. And it's looking like it's going to be an A push. Need to see a lot from Latex here. At least he has the Molotov, but straight through the oh. Molly goes hit. But unfortunately, uh, hip. straight into the stinger of Latex. And the Orbital Strike now can be popped in showers, which could be very detrimental to Prodigy's hopes of getting onto this site. The slow is there, and the Rotator has been able to allow two players onto A. Unfortunately for Latex, as he's lining up the Orbital Strike, he will fall. Leo did actually spot one player going towards the defender spawn. Oh, he just ducked under that. Spike still hasn't gone down just yet. Leo gets the surprise attack, but Rhyme thankfully clears up. Otherwise, that could have been pretty awful for them. And that was just down to the Cypher. He's rotating all the way around from the attacker spawn at this point. The res is available for Rhyme if he wants to use it, but arguably they don't really need it here. And their economy should be in a decent state where they don't need to res for eco on the me either. So we will see what happens, whether Meadow can do something clutch. I think he's only got a Sheriff as well. Can we, can we talk about Hip for a second there? The Molotov goes down inside the smoke and it, he's he's just in full W key mode. Just <laughs> blast packs out. I mean, I respect it. I absolutely respect it. <laughs> what, what it isn't though, it's, it's zero respect to the enemy team. <laughs> Maybe he was hoping that he could at least get the info and the rest of the team would follow, but the rest of the team was like, dude, what are you doing? There's a Molotov there. <laughs> you're, you're, you're gonna die. And they just watched him die in front of them. And it was, it was, it was sad. Maybe we should need some slow melodic music to go behind it but 11-6 now for prodigy and they are edging closer and closer to not only taking this map but taking this series and marching on towards the winners bracket finals fabrican just needed more of a solid hold now comeback still there it's still definitely doable for them i'm not going to count them out just yet but if prodigy win this one and go 12-6 up then i fear that it could be game over so the economy for Fabrican will be pretty much in tatters. From what I can remember anyway, obviously we can't see it with the scoreboard bug. Ryan has just been able to so easily find his way into lamps here. Like, oh, how oh, is this oh, so oh. easy? Now he can just wall off the defender's spawn here. They've got the res if they need it. Just Slows like that. Out for heaven. And maybe this was a save from Fabric in this round, judging by how they stacked themselves all the way over to B side. Just a couple of players very defensively on A. And poor Prodigy, well, they've been able to so easily get themselves into post plans that this becomes near impossible for Fabrican unless someone's able to pull out all the stops. Yeah, one of them's got to pop off here. Slowly but surely running out of time here, and unfortunately, they're just running into the rifle of Pora. Pora looks for a 4K. It's not going to happen, but Ryan finishes off the round. 12-6, and that was far, far too easy for Prodigy to just waltz onto the site there. Well, the good thing was Hip with a great reactionary showstopper. As soon as he heard the Owl Drone coming out, so the Owl Drone, the Owl Drone, the Owl Drone uh, being used from back near pipes. As soon as he heard that, he blast packs over truck, pops his showstopper, and he knows that he's got a free kill at that point. If you can be close enough to the Sova when he pops that Owl Drone, you get the audio cue, and you can place it exactly, he can't get out of it and react in time. So really, really nice entry from Hip there. The problem being, there's one player in heaven and then one behind uh, in, in pipe. So at that point, yeah, it's it's absolutely free to just walk through lamps and get side control. Rhyme's actually going to find Zipan and Shower here as well to start this round. So things not looking good for Fabrican here. I feel like Zipan just gave up there. I mean, he's seen yeah. two players there and he said, well, I'm still going well, to continue I'm to committing. challenge my Sheriff. I'm committing. Yeah. <laughs> committed to this fight. Maybe I can win this battle and it gets us back into the game. But it looks like Fabrican going to have to start thinking about a lower bracket run at this point. Although Prodigy, even though they've got five players, one is tagged down relatively low. Lucker is going to be somewhat weak. 
They've managed to find themselves into shell into lamps yet again here. So much information just being gained, and it means that they can push onto the defender's spawn. Maybe Leo is aware of this, and they've pushed right into his trap there. Has recon available to see if there's a second player, which there was, but Turco quite rightly getting out of dodge. But they still got, they've got control of front sight here. You can see it's just going to go down. Hunter Fury going to stop the plant initially. That's going to bait out the rotation because we've got a cipher all the way through Hookah, Pora with all the freedom on B site. And now you can see the three defenders have to come through the defensive spawn. They get some contact on elbow here. Pora going to come out on top of that one as expected the way he's playing. Shadow will fall and that is now a 2v4 retake on the cards for Fabricant to keep their tournament hopes alive. 2 players remaining make that just one. Pura finds a third onto Latex. And it's all going to be down to Leo in a 1 versus 4. And I'm sorry if you're a Fabrican fan, but there is no chance this is happening. So much utility still left for Prodigy and they face. It's the 4K for Pura. It's the round.